In this video, we're going to be looking at the quadrant properties. So this is in reference to the circle and the different circular functions, so sine, cos, and tan. And often these are called the symmetry properties. And basically, we're going to look at how we can work out angles such as cos 110 degrees. As we know how to work out other angles such as, let's say, cos 45, cos 60, we've only looked at how to calculate angles when they're between 0 and 90. But now we're going to extend this and using these symmetry or quadrant properties we can work out other angles that are outside this range but are still relate to these exact values which we've already learnt. So to begin we'll look at the unit circle, or well, this can just be a circle here, and then we've got a particular angle. So at this particular angle we've got in the unit circle we've got two sort of lines, two components. So the first component is the sine component, so that is equal to sine theta. And the other component here is the cos component. So there, that's cos theta, and then this line here is sine theta. Now if we take a line in the second quadrant, so we'll call this here the second quadrant, so this one will be the first quadrant, and this is going to be the second quadrant, and then the third, and then the fourth, and realize that that is obviously angle of zero, that's an angle of 90 degrees, that's an angle of 180 degrees, and that's an angle of 270 degrees, and then it comes back at zero or 360. So we've taken another line which has an equal angle. Then if we take that particular point and go down, we see that the magnitude of sine theta is the same. So the magnitude of this sine theta is equal to that sine theta, and you can see that graphically. And then the magnitude of cos theta is the same. Now we're going to be talking about magnitudes, but later we'll add in the sine as well. But at the moment you can see that the magnitudes are the same. So if we have an angle here against the x-axis, and we then put it on the other side, due to the symmetry or quadrant properties, you can see that the sine and the cos magnitudes will be the same. Then if we look at, extend this line down into the third quadrant. So if we extend this line into the third, then we've got two angles. So we've got an angle here, which is theta, then over here, which is theta as well. And these are equal. Once again, if we look at sine, theta, we see that the magnitudes of both are the same. And also the magnitudes of cos are the same here. So this length and this length are equal. Then what we can once again say it's for the first, the second, the third, and then if we look at the fourth, we'll get the same result. So if we draw a line down here, let it equal theta, the sine magnitude will be the same, and then the cos magnitude will be the same. So we haven't talked about the like plus or minus yet, positive or negative the sine. However, the magnitude of the different angles will be the same. So it could be sine theta, could be cos theta. And if sine and cos are both the same, then obviously tan is the same as well. So these also apply to tan theta. Now the main thing is, I've always been taking the angle from the x-axis. That's a really important note. That... Whenever I'm taking an angle from a line, it's always between the line and the x-axis. So this axis here. We're not looking, if we take an angle, let's say a line here, we don't look at that angle. We call theta this angle here. So between the line and the x-axis rather than the y-axis, even if this angle is bigger than whatever angle this is, like calling it x. So what do these properties mean for us? What can they let us do? Well, if we wanted to look at cos 30 degrees, we know that we can work out now that the magnitude of cos 30 degrees is equal to cos negative 30 degrees. And you can see that because when you have the two axes here and you calculate the 30 degrees, 
this length here, down here, will be equal to negative 30 degrees. Or it is also equal to cos 330 degrees. And 330 degrees is the same as negative 30, because if you go from this point here and you go all the way around, so that's 90, that's 180, that's 270, and then you keep going, this angle here is 330 degrees, and that means that angle in the middle is going to be 30, because the whole circle is 360. So we know that those two magnitudes, those two angles in regards to the magnitude are equal. We also know that this is equal to cos 180 minus 30 degrees. So why is it 180 minus 30? Well, once again, looking at this line, we know that this angle and this angle, the magnitudes are the same. So if this angle here is 30, then this angle here is going to be equal to 180, so all the way around, and then minus however much the angle is. So minus that angle, and then you'll get the angle to that line here. So this, this ends up being equal to cos 150 degrees. And that's because cos 150 degrees will give us the line here. And as that's 150, therefore this angle here will give us 30 degrees. And we already know that this angle here when it's 30 degrees has the same properties when this angle here with the x-axis is 30. So even though we, when we say 150 degrees, we're always going from the starting point, when we're talking about the symmetry properties, we're talking about it from the x-axis. So you just need to understand how you can un see that one cos 150 degrees gives us an angle between the x-axis and the line of 30 degrees. However, from the starting point to that line, the angle is 150 degrees. And finally, we can see how this relates to the third quadrant. And this is that this is equal to the magnitude of cos 180 plus 30 degrees. That's because if you looking at the third quadrant, if this angle there, you have this angle here. And to get that angle there, you need to go from the starting point. You need to add 180 degrees and then continue more. And however much you continue is the angle. So it's going to be 180 plus 30 degrees and the magnitude will be equal to cos 30. So in a general sense, this can also relate to sine. So we can say that sine theta is equal to sine negative theta, which is equal to sine 180 minus theta. So that is re reference to the second quadrant, the fourth quadrant, and then obviously the first one is the first quadrant. Then this is equal to sine 180 plus theta, which is the third quadrant. So we've looked at the magnitudes, such as sine theta magnitude is equal to the magnitude of sine negative theta. But now we need to know what these values actually are. So we need to know if they're positive or negative. So we can work those out by working out what quadrants it's in. So if it's in the first, second, or third, or fourth. And then from there, we know if it's positive or negative. So we've calculated exact values so far, so let's say pi on 3, or cos theta, or tan theta, they have all been always positive. And the reason for that is because we've only looked when theta is between 90 degrees and 0, i.e. the first quadrant. So if we take a line in the first quadrant, we'll call that theta, and we look at anywhere on this line, so another line here, so theta, then sine is always positive. So here, this value here, sine is positive. And that's because we're going from here along, you can think about this as a y-axis and the x-axis, and here is the positive y value. So it's going to be positive sine values. If we then look at cos, we can see that cos is also positive, and that's because we're looking at the positive x values. So in a graph, so x, y, that's when x is positive and that's when y is positive. So in the first quadrant, both are going to be positive. That's so. That's why we have positive, positive, positive here. 
But what about if we then looked at the second quadrant? Well, if you look at the second quadrant, so we call that theta. So firstly, sine. Well, sine is still positive. And the reason why sine is still positive is because we're still in the positive y-axis. X is now negative, but sine is still positive. Anywhere along we go, along here, sine is still going to be a positive number. But what about cos? So looking at cos, cos is now negative. So the reason why cos theta is a negative number is because before we had x is positive, but now x is negative for the second quadrant. So in the first quadrant, sine is positive, and in the second quadrant, sine is positive. But in for cos, it's only in the first one that is positive, and then in the second one, it's negative. But what about the third and fourth quadrants? So taking a line here, looking at the third quadrant, you should look at, well, x and the y-axis. So firstly, we're in the x, negative x value and we're in the negative y value. So if this was a graph, you could say that point, for example, was let's say negative one, negative three, or any points along here is gonna be a negative, negative number. So because both are negative, cos theta is gonna give us a negative number and also sine theta will give us a negative number. Looking in the final quadrant, so the fourth quadrant, if we take an angle, we look here, then we see that sine theta is still negative. And then cos theta now becomes positive. So cos is positive twice, and that's because you're in the positive x-axis in two quadrants and then the negative in two. So cos, is, cos theta is positive in the first and then the fourth. And then if we look at sine theta, it is positive in the first and the second, but then it's negative because it gets in the negative values for the third. And also, as you can see here in the fourth, it is still a negative value as it's y is negative. So in summary for all those, we can look at sine theta. So in the first quadrant, it's positive. In the second, it's positive. So looking at the y, you can see that. In the third, it's negative. In the fourth, it's negative. Cos theta is positive in the first, negative in the second, negative in the third. So you can see if you put a line through here, then all, all these values are going to be negative x. So that's why negative and negative. And then in the fourth, it's positive again. Looking at tan theta, well, tan theta is equal to sine over cos. So when both are positive, it's going to be a positive number. Then when one's positive and one's negative, it's going to be a negative number. When one is negative and one is negative, the negatives will cancel. So both are negative. Then we're going to get a positive. And then tan along here, because one's negative, one's positive, we're going to get a negative. So that is in summary. So it's good to be able to logically think why that's the case. So I put the line across and think, well, cos has to be negative, sine has to be positive. However, a good way to remember it is to remember the acronym that ASTC. So all stations to, and then you pick whatever station you know that starts with C. So this tells us that in the first quadrant, all values are positive. In the second one, only sine is positive. So in the first one, they're all positive. In the second one, only sine is positive. In the third one, only tan is positive. In the fourth one, only cos is positive. So that is the fourth, the third, and the second, the first quadrant. So this may seem confusing at first, both the magnitudes and whether it's positive or negative in the different quadrants and how we can sort of relate this to questions and make it useful. However, I'll go through in the next video some examples of this, such as how we can calculate sine of 120 degrees or uh, num degrees that are big, bigger than 90. And that's when these uh, values are useful as well as when we're graphing it as obviously the theta the angle gets bigger than 90 degrees